Hello, this is Political Forum for Wednesday, April 29th, 2015. We welcome today as our guest, Alderman Willie B. Cochran of the 20th Ward, which covers communities such as Woodlawn, Englewood, and Back of the Yards. Thank you for appearing on Political Forum today, Alderman. Thank you for having me. My name is Eileen Kim, and I'm a board member here at Can TV. This is a live interactive program brought to you as a community service of Can TV. We welcome your questions and comments for Alderman Cochran by calling us at 312 738 1060. During the next 25 mm. minutes, we'll try to get to as many of your calls as possible on air. So, Alderman, you focus on job creation and economic development throughout your career as Alderman. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about how you support small businesses and bring quality commercial establishments to okay. the 29th Ward? Well, just, you've, sorry, you've, men you've mentioned <laughs> <laughs> yes, the 20th Ward, and I want to thank KNT Free for allowing me to have this forum uh, so that I can talk to the community out there. Hello, everyone. I'm Willie B. Cochran of the 20th Ward, and uh, she just asked me about job creation. One of the ways that we've been able to address that is to establish what is called the Center for Working Families. Center for Working Families is located at 6301 South Halsett. It is in the, on the footprint of Kennedy King College. Our partners in that is Metropolitan Family Services, City Colleges, and um, the City of Chicago all make contributions along with the Local Initiative Support Corporation. And, and the goal there is to meet people where they are. Is it uh, changing jobs from a job loss? Is it uh, getting a GED? Is it assessing what your family needs are so that you could successfully navigate through training programs, certification programs, or finding out what your interests are and in, in getting you qualified to do that? We've had a lot of success in that area. Mm -hmm. That success that we've had in that area uh, um, amounts to maybe about 300 people being employed at this point. Uh, and at so many other family services that have been delivered and that's why we chose Metropolitan Family Services as our partner. Is it something that you need in your family? Is it some counseling that is needed? Is it some housing that is needed? Is it some support services that is needed? Metropolitan Family Services provides a wide variety of services. We have a satellite center in Woodlawn. The main center is at Kennedy King. The satellite center is operated by SGA, Youth and Family Services. It's at 822 East 63rd Street. It does the same thing, assess, support, and provides better career opportunities for those who are seeking that. That is how we have addressed the employment opportunities part. Through small businesses, though, mm -hmm. we have... Um, on recruited businesses. I go out to Las Vegas on to the in, International Retail Association mm -hmm. meetings and we go and we sit and talk to developers and businesses from all over the country and tr take information about our areas and try to sell those businesses and um, developers on coming into the surrounding communities. Usually 10, 12 aldermen take that trip to recruit businesses in our community. I personally reach out to other businesses that may be local uh, to come and try and get them to support us. Right now I'm in a conversation with Mariano's along with the developers to try and get a building in the Woodlawn community. Uh, and if that's successful, we'll be very happy. And sometimes I even go out to Washington, D.C. and talk to the first family and tell them that I need a library <laughs> in the Woodlawn or Washington Park community. And if that happens, uh, it is alleged that that could support 40 businesses and make all kinds of contributions mm -hmm. and, and uh, lift communities up uh, in, in the surrounding area that will build out vacant lots, uh, expand opportunities, create jobs, and have such a big, 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 big impact on the lives and outcomes of the people in the city of Chicago and the surrounding communities. That's great. A lot going on in the 20th century. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and I didn't tell you all of it. So <laughs> we're talking about job creation. We're talking about um, helping small businesses. Mm -hmm. We use the Small Business Increment Incentive Fund mm -hmm. that will... Uh, that can support small businesses that are, are trying to get in business, mm -hmm. trying to expand, 
and improve their current business. Uh, and it's called a SPIF. Mm -hmm. And we've been pretty successful in helping a number of businesses um, with that. We've had probably put about four million dollars wow. into small businesses through that process across the ward, from the back of the yards to the woodlawn community. Um, and we also have a call on the line. Um, caller, what's your question for Alderman Cochran? Yes, good evening. Good evening. A uh, question concerning uh, Governor Rauner uh, has been in the news lately talking about uh, budget cuts that uh, be affecting a lot of, um, of people. And so my question to you is that have you, what have you heard um, from your constituents? I know you're talking about developing business in your, in your ward. Mm -hmm. um, are people kind of scared about the budget cuts, uh, like small businesses, nonprofits, you know, families? Well, I think the people, those that will affect it, that are being affected most, in these conversations are social service providers. There's a big knife being taken to, anticipated on being taken to those social service providers. One of the other areas that not only the city of Chicago is um, being affected by, but um, other communities in the state of Illinois um, are being told that they're gonna get 50% less of resources from the state to support their communities. Uh, and that will affect public surf safety, it will affect the way we deliver services uh, in terms of streets and sands and transportation, um, patching of roadways and so on and so forth. These, these uh, uh, changed uh, dynamics relative to uh, unions and workforce and uh, labor agreements. There's a lot of rippling effect that has taken place as a result of this governor coming into office and focusing on budget issues um, that we do know the state has, the city has, um, but there are sometimes we have to be a little bit more uh, compassionate in, in the way that we enforce and move forward. Uh, and so, yeah, we have some problems. Education has problems. Cities have problems around the state of Illinois. Um, and Alderman, we have another caller. Caller, you're on the air. What's your question for Alderman Cochran? Uh, um, since you're thinking about a uh, fund, you said it was, was it SWIFT fund, you know, for the area, for small businesses? Oh. Uh, um, you're kind of um, hard to hear at this point, but I'm going to try it. Um, decipher what has been said. I think you mentioned SPIF funds. Right, SPIF. Okay. SPIF is a program that is a is associated with a tax incremental finance district. If your area has a tax incremental finance district and it has been designated, a TIF has been, SPIF has been designated in that, uh -huh. uh, your alderman uh, can work with you uh, on that subject matter. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so we have another caller with a question. Caller, you're on the air. What's your question for the alderman? Hi, I live in a building. I think we have five uh, units in my building, but we don't have any of the blue recycling bins out back. Is there anything I can do to get to whatever you guys go through the city to make sure that happens through my alderman or talk to my landlord about fixing that? Well, residential properties are what the city of Chicago Streets and Sanitation focuses on. Residential, prop, prop, residential properties are from one to four units. When you get to five and above, that is considered a commercial property. Commercial properties management owners are responsible for the recycling of that uh, and for the scavenger services. So you would talk to your landlord about that and they would bring blue carts and recycling bins for your building. Okay, so just as a quick reminder, you're watching Political Forum, a community service of CAN-TV. My name is Eileen Kim, and I'm a board member of CAN-TV. This is a live interactive show. If you have a question for Alderman Cochran, please call 312-738-1060. Um, so, Alderman, I know you're a strong supporter of minority hiring within Chicago, getting back to the jobs and economic development. Yes. Can you tell us about your recent efforts to boost minority hiring on city contracts? Well, one of the things that the city council has most recently passed and 
Han, we've been a co-sponsor on is an initiative to Han, hire and contract with local contractors. What does that mean? That means that we've given, uh, and, and I have to say the, the mayor has listened to our cries and mm -hmm. concerns about this, and he's initiated a ordinance that we've supported that now allows local contractors and in, uh, to hire subcontractors from wherever a local contract is being implemented that has city money associated with it. Mm -hmm. And so if we're doing roadway work, if we are doing plumbing work, if we are doing sewer work, if we are uh, doing anything that has do city dollars associated with it, an incentive is given to the contractor to hire subcontractors mm -hmm. and local people who are trained to do the job. Uh, and then that reduces the cost and incentives for that contractor. I think that'll be a great thing uh, in terms of answering some of the questions relative to seeing people who look like those people in the neighborhood working in the neighborhood. Another thing that will help us is on uh, what is called a uh, <clears throat> rental, I'm sorry, it's on, um, it's a rental development program mm -hmm. uh, agreement that we've had and that is going to address that portion of the city's let me let me part start over on that oftentimes people look at the development in downtown and say the development is all happening downtown and nothing is happening in the local communities what we've done is we've expressed that same sentiment again to mayor Rahm Emanuel and he has responded by uh, creating an incentive on, and a penalty for those builders who are trying to build in downtown area. We've had created zones. Those zones, for instance, zone A is in the downtown area. West Loop, South Loop, zone B. And then out in the surrounding communities is considered zones C. If you're building in zone A, one of the things that happens is that anything over 10 units you are required to have affordable housing units. What has happened in the past, anybody who has built over 10 units has the option of paying $100,000 per unit to not have to supply affordable units in that building. And so if you're building 100 units, 10 of those are required. And sometimes 20% of those are required for affordable housing units. What has been happening is that the developer will pay that $100,000 and that $100,000 goes to a fund and that fund is used to build affordable housing all over the city. What we've done is try to incentivize those developers so that we, so we've increased that penalty but also given them incentives to build outside of that zones. If they build outside of the zones then that 10 percent requirement goes away but at the same time they are building homes that are out in our communities, restoring homes that have been foreclosed on and so on and so forth. And if we can get that moving in the direction that we want to, it will have a big impact on our neighborhoods. Sounds like a great program. Yeah. Um, we have another caller. Caller, you're on the air. What's your question for Alderman Cochran? Yeah, Alderman Cochran. I have a concern with uh, the uh, the Parkway Gardens right there on King Drive uh, complex. Is no stop signs anywhere between 63rd and 65th? It's young kids go across their street every day. I mean, if it's nothing but a stop when you see pedestrian signs, the little signs that you see in every neighborhood, it wouldn't be too much to ask you to provide that, Alderman Cochran. That's your responsibility. <clears throat> okay, in response to that, I can tell you that there are signs um, that, have, that, are on, that are posted. Uh, r relative to the speed limit, school signs, 
because there's a school there. As also, it, it tells you about uh, warning signs about speed cameras and red light cameras. That request that you have put in to me is not a hard request to research. What I will promise you I will do is contact the Department of Transportation and tell them that I would like a study on a traffic study so that we can satisfy that need that you see to protect our children and protect anyone who's crossing that. Not, not, not hard to say, not hard to do. I promise you we'll make that happen. We have another caller on the line. Call yeah, good evening to y'all. I was going to ask the 20 aldermen, okay, like, I see too many uh, vacant lots in, uh, in every, different areas. And then how can they talk about they was going to build uh, stores for people to have jobs, but they're going to build a, a, a President Obama library or a trauma center? And then what about the job for the, uh, like, grocery stores and stuff? Hello? Yes. Can you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, now they, okay. Okay, the, some of the aldermen don't, don't know what, what they want, the library or a trauma center or, uh, like, a grocery store that on these lots. And I've seen too many uh, vacant lots. And how can they decide? They didn't make no decision yet. How long are they going to wait? So um, what I'm understanding you is, is um, saying there has been no decision associated with the presidential library. That's number one. Number two, your concerns are jobs. Um, I've been told as far as yesterday, as soon as early as yesterday, that the president is planning and the first family is planning on coming to Chicago to make an announcement next month, uh, which is, this is the 29th. Uh, so I expect some kind of announcement to be made relative to that. As far as jobs are concerned, I think that, again, I will state it is estimated that approximately 15,000 jobs could be created as a result of the Presidential Library coming in to this city. When they are going to make the announcement, I expect it to be made in the next three to four weeks. Don't hold me to that because I am not the one who's setting the schedule, but I'm just giving you a time frame from which I have heard. And as far as the trauma center is concerned, that is a very, very important issue that we have to get by the horns. I am a very big supporter of having us a trauma center, and I think, in fact, we should have a couple of them on, on the southeast side, one further south, one mid-south. Um, those discussions are taking place. Uh, I am part of a discussion and have made some suggestions relative to that. Roseland has, Hospital has indicated that they are willing to have a trauma center. Right now we're building a ambul new ambulatory center at St. Bernard's Hospital. St. Bernard's Hospital is located at 63rd and Harvard. And uh, whether you know it or not, St. Bernard's Hospital has more emergency room runs than any hospital in this city. By building that new ambulatory center, it will free up space in the current hospital. By freeing up space in the current hospital, we are going to be working as hard as we possibly can to improve and upgrade the equipment and the services that are delivered to you or anyone else who comes to that hospital. Is it going to be trauma level? We are working on that. But I can tell you it is a very important issue. I am a supporter of it and I will always have my voice there. So we want to have you to get jobs. We want to have that library come. We want to have those vacant lots filled in. And I think all of those things you'll see taking place. All of it has depended on the economics and the economic downturn. We're trying to recover from that. We, the economy is changing. Goals and resources are available now, and we are trying to work them to the best of our ability. Thank you, Aldrin. We have another caller on the line. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my call. Alderman, I was just curious, are they going to extend the green line to Stony Island? No, the green line is not uh, going to be extended to, this, to Stony Island. Not that I know of. Nobody has ever had a conversation with me on that. 
on. And so that's the answer. Okay. Just as a quick reminder, you're watching Political Forum, a community service of CAN TV. I'm Eileen Kim, a board member of CAN TV, and this is a live interactive show. If you have a question for Alderman Cochran, please give us a call at 312 738 1060. Um, so, Alderman, just quickly, are there any upcoming events hosted by your office that you'd like your viewers to be aware of? Well, I think I'd like them, the viewers to be aware of one of them. Um, uh, I'm a fan of Chicago Defender newspaper, mm -hmm. and they are celebrating a 110-year anniversary starting on the 1st of May, throughout the whole month of May to the 31st. And I would uh, ask that the listening audience, the viewing audience, uh, contact the uh, Chicago Defender and see how they can become involved and participate in some of those festivities that they are having. On, um, I have an urban farm. It's called the Perry Street Farm, located at 57th in Perry. That farm is on on one of the first urban farms that we've uh, changed ordinances for. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the 4th of May, the UIC School of Public Health is going to be doing uh, coming out to work on the farm. And on the 9th, we're going to be having a volunteer work day at 57th and Perry. And on the 12th, we want to invite people out to have lunch at the farm in the farmhouse. And so uh, those are some of the things that we're going to be doing. And don't forget, on the 4th of May, the Special Olympics is going to be here uh, in Soldiers Field. And that, is something. and that started right here in Chicago. I think it's about 35. Uh, about 40 years ago yeah. and so um, that it will be here again on um, 4th of May not just the 20th Ward but there are mm -hmm. all kind of things to do um, that we should be aware of great um, Alderman we have another caller caller what's your question for the Alderman yes I just want to let the Alderman know that I'm in his ward mm -hmm. I'm on 56 in Prairie and I'm so appreciative of the police present uh, it doesn't matter what time of night I come home. They're all up and down the block, mm -hmm. all around Garfield. It makes seniors and just anybody feel so much safer. And so I know that there are some people in the area who don't like it, but I'm here to tell you, Alderman, there are way more people that love it. And I want to tell you, keep on with the work you're doing and keep on with this police presence. We need it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, thank you so much for giving us that thumbs up on uh, we want to protect the citizens of the community. Uh, we spend a lot of money to protect the citizens of the community. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things that I want uh, the listening audience to know is that as we see all of these problems around the nation relative to police abuse and mistreatment of community, uh, the Chicago Police Department, the city of Chicago, is working very diligently to ensure that those officers are continuing to have sensitivity training and responding to citizens in the correct way. One of our highest priorities is that citizen and police relationships are good ones. If they are not good, then we need to know about it. If somebody is treating you wrong, mistreating you, or you see abuse, please report it. We want to be able to provide professional police services and if it's not being done, we want to let you know that we will try and address whatever issues there are that need to be addressed. Don't be afraid to have encounters with the police. We want community and police relationships to be the best that it possibly can be viewed as protection and safeguards as opposed to oppressors and abusers. Got it. Thank you, Alderman. That was great. Um, if you need to reach the alderman at his office, please call 773-955-5610. You can also email him at ward20 at cityofchicago.org. And Alderman Cochran, thank you so much for appearing on Political Forum. And thank you, the viewers, for your calls. Our um, telephone technician tonight has been Sylvia, and thank you to her as well. Political Forum is brought to you as a community service of CAN TV. Please join us again for Political Forum next Wednesday. Thank you for having me. Thank you.